The Development of Fluoroscopy One year after the discovery of x-rays by Rankin in 1896, Thomas Edison created the first fluoroscope. The real-time or dynamic image could only be viewed by the radiologist by allowing their eyes to adjust to complete darkness, which would typically be done wearing red goggles for up to 30 minutes. The fluoroscopic exam would also be conducted in complete darkness. Edison's first design consisted of a light-tight, handheld metal cone with a fluorescent screen placed on the opposite side of the patient from the x-ray source. The screen would glow with the radiographic image when the x-ray tube was energized and the remnant beam struck the screen. They referred to this as open fluoroscopy. In this setup from the image on the left taken in 1917, a French physician searches for bullet shrapnel inside a soldier in preparations to remove what he can surgically. The image on the right, believed to be taken somewhat earlier, shows the x-ray tube without a protective housing at eye level while the physician examines his own hand, which he's placed between the tube and the fluorescent screen as he looks through the light-tight viewing apparatus. Later development, such as this image, shows an early evolution of the system to have the screen mechanically attached to the x-ray tube, freeing up the radiologist's hands. The disadvantages still existed of requiring the examination to be conducted in darkness, as well as the high radiation dose required to produce an image with this early technology, both for the patient and the physician, along with anyone else potentially in the room. In the 1940s, the first electronic image intensification tube was introduced by inventor John Coltman. It took until 1952 for it to be commercially available, and was marketed by the Westinghouse company as the Florex. It was only 8 centimeters in diameter. The model on the right is a similar model in appearance from the 1960s. Dr. Coltman was recognized for his many contributions to science, including receiving the Longstreth Medal, of the Franklin Institute for his development of the X-ray image amplifier and being named Pittsburgh's Man of the Year in Science by the Junior Chamber of Commerce. In 1968, he was awarded the Westinghouse Order of Merit, not only for the X-ray amplifier and scintillation counter, but also for his pioneering contributions to the infant science of radar in the 1940s and his later work on undersea equipment and electron tubes, including television. Later in 1970, he was awarded the Rinken Medal by the Rinken Museum in Germany, and in 1976, he was elected to the National Academy of Engineering. By 1982, he received the Gold Medal of the Radiological Society of North America in recognition of the development of the X-ray image amplifier. I find the public's fascination with X-ray interesting and the ingenuity of usage for X-ray machines. In this example, we see a shoe-fitting fluoroscope. These were once available for public use in high-end shoe stores. They even came with a certificate with measurements of the amount of ankle roll, weight distribution, and unilateral fitting tests based on images viewed through the fluoroscope. Note the advertising on this certificate. This scientific way of approaching the problem of poorly fitted shoes eliminates guesswork. Now you can see for yourself. Of course, the public began to see some long-term effects of radiation dose on their feet after a period of usage. It's unfortunate, now knowing the significance of effects on children that radiation can have, that you see images like this showing the usage of a shoe-fitting fluoroscope to fit a child for shoes, along with some radiation damage seen to the feet. Not to distract too much from the lesson, but... I find it interesting that advertising agencies have utilized physicians to sell products, especially when it comes to products that have now been studied long enough to produce known carcinogenic effects. Take this dentist-recommended cigarette advertisement from the 1960s, for example, or these where a certain number of doctors were surveyed for advertising purposes. I think we've grown in scientific research, particularly with the FDA in the United States, in regards to testing done for publicly available materials, but something to be mindful of in the future for sure. Early fluoroscopic exams required several hours to conduct with a total beam on time of up to one hour. While fluoroscopic live images take less radiation than static x-ray to produce, 
Both have the ability to cause significant radiation injuries historically since the patient was required to be exposed to the live x-ray beam for such long periods of time. Modern digital fluoroscopic units have many dose-reducing technologies that we'll discuss in detail in this course. They primarily consist of lower MA output systems, an image intensification tube, and a closed-circuit camera with CCD or CMOS camera, which all assist in exponential dose reduction compared to the examples of fluoroscopy from the beginning of this video. The addition of manual and automatic collimators, multiphasic radiographic systems, and the automatic brightness control, which alters MA and KVP values to adjust for variations in patient and part thickness, all help to promote the highest image quality possible at the lowest dose. And we continue to see improvements in this technology each and every year.